Hey guys, today I want to talk about goodness. Goodness in the world. Is it being challenged or was it always being challenged? Is it different? Are things different today than they were in the past? Are there different players? What's the difference? You know, expats today, we, we, we seem to get challenged a lot over a lot of th issues in the Philippines and also in other countries too. And, and the, it gets even worse in the U.S. as we know it. But I mean, if, if we look back, there's always been challenges all throughout the world. Remember the program Kung Fu? I was, I was watching a clip from this the other day and it kind of reminded me of this. And I says, you know what? I'm going to do a vlog on this because this would be kind of a cool vlog to talk about because when you think about it, the, the David Carradine character, Kane, you know, he was like the ultimate expat or immigrant or whatever you want to call him, you know, and as Americans would challenge him, he would block the first blows and he'd just kind of like stop. And then the guy would be thinking sometimes, you could tell the guy would be thinking in some of the fights anyway, he would be thinking for a second, should I challenge this guy? This guy's just a Chinaman, it's no big deal. You know, I'm gonna, I, I, can, I can kick this guy's butt. And then David Carradine would, would put him in his place. But he was kind of like a humble character. He always played a humble character. It's hard being humble in today's world. I'll tell you, it's hard being humble. And humility is something that we all have to work at in today's world for sure. You know, and, and I, I'm challenged by that sometimes myself. Um, sometimes I'm, I, can, I can be, you know, quick to get anger, angry at, at things. And, and I'll be the first to admit it, you know. Um, but I remember that character so well because... David Carradine played that character so well in in the in the in the series anyway. Behind the scenes, David Carradine was probably like a lot of the expats that are over here. Look, he got caught, he got found in Thailand, dead, tied to a doorknob or something like that, um, playing some asphyxiation game with some prostitute or something like that. Unfortunately, and it's not the way most people want to be remembered, especially when you played such a great character as Kane in, in the Kung Fu series, you know. But I mean, as as People over here, we're all kind of like the grasshoppers of the Philippines. You know, remember that term that they used to use, grasshopper? You know, in the, in the Kung Fu series, we're kind, of, we're kind of, we kind of are the grasshoppers, and we're kind of learning our lessons from what the Philippine hands us. And sometimes they're not fun lessons, and we have to have kind of handle those with a little bit of humility sometimes because we're living on the terms here. And I think David Carradine, when he played that character, he wanted to kind of show the world that you know you got to kind of respect people and he always had respect even for his enemies the way he, he did things with people he would leave them alone when he knew that they had enough he knew when to walk away he knew when to hurt somebody when not to hurt somebody he, we have to kind of have that humility here too and i'm not talking about physical i'm talking about emotional because we don't have the same kind of things that he had which is back in the wild, wild west or whatever. You know what I mean? So it was a really a different world back then. And David Carradine was probably like one of the, the coolest Western characters when you think about it. Even though he was playing a Chinaman, he played that ca character really, really well. And in many other movies too, he played really, really good characters. You know, he was just like a, an awesome dude. But it, when he played Kane, if you think about it, you can kind of, you know, see the correlation between him and us you know because we really are learning just like he's learning he's learning that the u.s is not this 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 um great place that everybody thinks it is he's finding out that there's a lot of idiots also in the united states just like us on our own we're finding out that there's a lot of idiots in the united states too some of the guys that come over here are complaining about all the stuff that's going on back home you know with all the the, the craziness and and we just you know we kind of just have to get away from that and we come over here and we find a new new set of issues but over here we have to handle them differently we really have to handle them differently and i think yelling at people is not the way to go today i had to go talk to the store that i was talking to i'm not going to say the name of the store or anything like that but i talked to the store and I, I told the manager there what had happened to me about the um my 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 number getting stolen from my atm card and I'm not 100% sure it was them, but I kind of gave them like a heads up as to what happened. And be watching for things like people holding phones over over cards and stuff like that. Because you can, really can't ask somebody for their, their phone and say, hey, let me look at your phone. I want to see. I don't think you can as a manager ask for that. 
You know, so you have to be able to prove that somebody did that. And it's going to be hard for that lady to prove that they're going to have to catch these people doing this. And I'm pretty, pretty sure because I hadn't used my ATM in a long time except for um, restaurants. And they do it right in front of you. The transaction is all done in front of you. So, like, I'm, I'm like, you know, 80, 90 percent sure, maybe even more than that, that it was that store. But I, I told her and I was very humble about it. And I just told her, I said, look, I says, you know. I, I I just want you to watch out and be aware that this happened. And I told her, and she says, oh, I don't think that. I says, no, I'm pretty sure it happened here. You know, and, and she goes, okay, sir, I'll, I'll keep an eye out and I'll look into it. I'll look at the cameras. This, the, so she said she was going to look at the cameras, which was which was good. She said she's going to look into it. So I was really happy about that. So, you know, when you're over here, even though somebody did something to piss you off, don't immediately blame people because you might, you might be wrong. And... When I see something that I know 100%, then I'm 100% sure, you know, then you know. But sometimes with what, what happened with me, although I seen something going down in front of me and it looked like it might have been, I had the feeling that I should put my hand over my card when they were doing it because they held the camera right over. But I didn't want to make her, you know, make her think that I was accusing her of possibly stealing my number, which possibly was what happened. But I can't be 100% sure. I didn't want to humiliate her or anything like that and make her think she's a thief. So, and in the end, it might have been that way. It might not have been. We, we still don't know until we look at the, she looks at the cameras or whatever. <clears throat> and I don't want to accuse somebody either. So, you know, we kind of have to have that humility of, of Cain. You know, Cain was always kind of a guy that just kind of walked around and mind his business until somebody pushed him. Until they pushed him too far and, and he couldn't take it anymore. But he'd always give, get, you know, give a couple of light blows first to give warnings and just say, hey, listen stop it now or I'm going to unleash, you know, and he did, you know, and, and he did it in a physical way because that's all he was trained to do. And that's, that was during the wild, wild west when there was a lot of physical stuff going on during that time, like gunfights and everything else, you know, <clears throat> that's why they called it the wild, wild west, because it was, wasn't really a lot of lawmen around during that time. Well, the Philippines kind of has that feel too sometimes here, kind of has that wild, wild west feel, but it has... A little bit of a humility here too. It's kind of a funky place. Asia is kind of a, 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 a funny place because it has an underbelly too. We have that underbelly here too that you you really don't see much of, but it's there. And every once in a while we see that here, you know. And and it has it usually has to do with money or petty thefts or something like that. And you know we all have to be aware of that, but we also have to be you know aware that we have to kind of humble ourselves when we're calling people out on stuff. Or we're, we're, you know, somebody's doing something wrong. And I'm not talking about um, a crime or something like that all the time. I'm talking about, like, for us, we usually see things like people screwing up our orders and stuff like that. Yeah, you should call them out on it, but you should do it in a humble, nice way. And if they come back to you and, and, and you know, they don't take care of it in the proper way, say, well, look, I'm not going to pay for this, this, this order if I'm not going to, you know what I mean? I'm just using that as an example. We all have to have some humility with people. And over here... A lot of Filipinos will just put up with getting like the wrong food or the wrong order or something like that. But, you know, over here, our biggest problems, I think, are with sometimes with our own guys, our own expats. We kind of, you know, for me, I kind of sometimes I kind of feel bad because I kind of brought my problems here with, with this with this vlog. And I'll be totally honest with you. You know what I mean? Um, I'd say five or 10 percent of the people that come here, we have a problem with. It's usually not a huge problem. Sometimes it is a huge problem. We've had we've had huge problems here, and we try to handle them as best we can. And sometimes, you know, it it, it doesn't get handled. The people still keep causing issues or whatever. And, and but you have to kind of just learn to walk away and 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 be like Cain. You know, sometimes we have to be the teacher. Sometimes we have to be the student. You know. We, sometimes we have to be the student and walk away sometimes and say, you know, I'm going to take that as a lesson, you know, and I'm not going to deal with this or, or, or teach the other person a lesson in humility too by walking away. I think sometimes over here, a lot of expats don't see things that way. <clears throat> but anyway, I want to talk about that today because I thought it'd be kind of a cool subject. And it was a, it, that was a great show to watch, if you remember. And I, I just thought that would bring back some memories for you guys. Because I, I still like watching those shows once in a while, the old shows like the Andy Griffith show and, you know, the, the Kung Fu shows and a lot of those older shows because they had a little bit of humility and, and there was something about them, that wholesomeness. And I think we're losing a lot of that wholesomeness in today's world. 
you know, that humility, that humbleness that people had, you know, we've, we've lost a lot of that. And, and we need to go back to that guys. And me, for me, I've always tried to, to be one of those guys. And, it, and I don't know if I'll ever become one of those guys or not, you know, to be able to be that, that humble, but I, I try to be, and, 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 you know, I do have, have that small anger streak in me where sometimes it just takes me off when somebody does something to me and it takes me a while to heal from that you know and i think all of us kind of have that in us we we all take a while to heal it's hard to become a cain in this world you know and even though cain was a, a buddhist or whatever and i'm a christian i always liked that show and and, I, and even myself i read a lot of buddhist writings and stuff like that a lot i i enjoy re reading buddhist writings and buddhist thoughts um I think the Buddhists have it down for their, their the way that they think. And, you know, but I, I'm still a Christian and I still believe, you know, my thoughts as a Christian. And I don't want to really get into religion here, but I think we, we even we as Christians have a lot to learn from the Buddhists and the way that they carry themselves and the, the humility that they had, you know. And I just, you know, just kind of a cool thought, you know, that sometimes we also have to look at other religions for what they have to offer because they do have things to offer and sometimes you can learn from them although christianity's my faith and where i'm at you know they do offer you some wisdom and it's and sometimes it's good to look at that wisdom too god bless guys i hope you enjoyed today's show it's just kind of it's kind of something i want to cover today because i think it, it is it is something that that carries over to being an expat and expat life especially the way that that cain lived but but, but we don't want to live the way da david carradine lived towards the end but that's kind of the way a lot of the expats are over here. God bless, guys. Take care.